I wanted to make a longer video for you guys, but I'm too good at getting to the point quickly. So how can I make a longer video? Talk about lots of things instead of one, hence iceberg video. This is my own ideas as well as some inspired by other BSD icebergs. Tier 1. It's boring to tell you guys stuff you already know, so there's only one entry. Most of the characters are named after real life authors, and most of those who aren't are either a character created by one of those authors or someone they knew in real life. Tier 2. Author and artist. For the most part, BSD is created by two people. The writer, Kafka Asagiri, and the artist, Sango Harukawa. Both like to remain anonymous, with the only proof of Asagiri's existence being this photo he took with the authors included in BSD Gaiden. Asagiri's name is taken from Franz Kafka, an author most known for his book Metamorphosis, which is a very fitting choice for a pen name. Harukawa's name, Sango, was chosen because she is born on the 3rd of May, aka 3-5, she was also born in Yokohama, which again is surprisingly fitting. The novels. As well as the manga, Asagiri also writes novels for BSD. So far there are 10, which are a mix of side stories and prequels. 1, 2, 3, and 7 have been adapted into the anime in various ways. 5 is the movie Dead Apple. 4 is a side story about one of the agency's jobs, Atsuchi Aktagawa and a new character, H.G. Wells. 6 is an alternate universe. I honestly don't know what 9 is, I think it's just a summary of the main story, and 10 is about Oda and Daze when he joined the Port Mafia. 8 is the most important, and it's also the best. It's focused on Chuya and the sequel to Novel 7. It covers a lot of really interesting things and has a lot of lore. Highly recommend reading them if you can. Openings and endings. You know me, this has to be on here. The anime's openings and endings are always done by one of three bands. Openings 1, 3, and 5 are all songs by Grand Rodeo, with the lead singer also voicing Chuya. Openings 2 and 4 are both done by Screen Mode, whose lead singer is Tachihara's voice actor. Finally, every ending song is done by a band called Luck Life. While none of the members voice act in the series, Luck Life is canonically a real band in the BSD world. Beast. Beast is novel 6 and also a manga. It's the story of BSD in an alternate universe, one where Atsushi joined the Port Mafia and Aktagawa joined the detective agency. It's a really interesting read, especially if you're an Oda fan. Tales of the Lost. Bungo Stray Dogs Tales of the Lost is a mobile game released in 2017. In it, you pull in a gacha to collect various cards of BSD characters, to then use them to win battles in a fighting system that uses marbles. I played pretty consistently when the English server was first released, but it got pretty repetitive and I have barely opened the game for a few years now. Most of the AUs you see in fan art, like Chia as a singer or Rampo at a casino, come from this game. Gaiden Bungo Stray Dogs Gaiden is a canon side story manga set in the BSD universe. It follows the detective Yukito Ayasuji, author of Another, and Special Division agent Mizuki Sujimura, author of A Lonely Castle in the Mirror, as they work together to solve a murder case. It's a good read and includes appearances of main story characters like Ango and Chuya. Bungo To Alchemist This isn't really related to BSD, but it's fun so it's here. Bungo To Alchemist is a mobile game and anime that features the souls of real-life authors, mostly Japanese ones, fighting monsters in order to save their own books from being tainted. In terms of story, I find it pretty mid, and I thought that the characters lacked any significant personality. But aside from Chuya, it's definitely got BSDB in terms of character design. Listen, Aktagawa, Kunikida, and Oda are beautiful, okay? BSD was released before BTA, but to say it copied BSD is stupid in my opinion. Tier 3. Sokoku Bones Art Most official art of Daze and Chuya released by Studio Bones strongly implies a romantic relationship between them. From lying in roses, to referencing fairy tales about true love, to using Daze's bandages as a metaphor for fate, the subtext is there. In one of my personal favourites, they are drawn sitting on a fountain. It's a real place, the statue of the Guardian of Water in Yamashita Park, Yokohama, and is known for being a popular date spot. Real relationships. The real people behind the BSD cast have a ton of interesting interpersonal relationships, some of which were included in the series, some that weren't, and some that are completely reversed. Let's do a lightning round for this one. Dazai looked up to Aktagawa, while Aktagawa was a fan of Kunikido, Mori, and Natsume. Tanizaki and Aktagawa were actually quite close friends. Dazai, Ango, and Oda's relationship is probably the most accurate of the series, even down to their death order. Chuya and Dazai really hated each other. Koyo was Kyoka's mentor, and Hirotsu was friends with both of them. Tanizaki and Chuya were both into the same girl and both wrote about her. Mori and Yosano worked together and were really close friends. This could go on forever, you get the idea. 
The hunting dog's uniform. In the manga, the hunting dog's uniform is shown to be green, but it was changed to red in the anime. Why? Because it looked a little too much like the uniform of certain military groups around the 1940s. It was a change for the best. Rampo's name. Edgar Rampo is not the author's real name, it's just a pen name. It's a Japanese version of Edgar Allan Poe, who the real Rampo was a fan of. His real name was Taro Hirai. Is this also the case in BSD? Probably not. In terms of characters, it doesn't make any sense, and while it would be interesting if it was implying that Rampo wasn't actually Rampo's real name, other BSD characters' names are actually pen names too, like Dazai, Kyoka, Ango, and Yosano. So it would also have to be the same for them, which I doubt. Gender switches. There are actually a few characters in BSD who are not the same gender as their real life counterparts. Kyoka is the first, who despite using a feminine sounding pen name was really a man. Kyoka's mentor in both BSD and real life, Koyo, is actually also a guy. I mentioned it before, but novel 4 features the character HG Wells. What I didn't mention is that she's actually presented as a girl, despite once again the real HG Wells being a male. I assume this is done to balance out the cast a bit. Tier 4. Ayatsuji's own BSD. Ayatsuji is the main character of BSD Gaiden. While his most well-known work is another, his first novel is the interesting one here. His 1987 debut book, The Decagon House Murders, is oddly similar to BSD, as it features characters named after famous authors. Each of the main cast is named after a classic mystery author, including the likes of the Queen of Crime, Agatha Christie, and Sherlock Holmes creator Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He even has his own Edgar Allan Poe. It's kind of funny how he ended up going full circle. Aktagawa's coughing. It's pretty clear that Aktagawa is extremely unwell, having frequent coughing fits and throwing up blood. This is a reference to the real Aktagawa. After battling the flu several times, he ended up with a chronic lung condition, which made it difficult for him to breathe and caused a persistent cough. In BSD, it was likely caused by him living in the slums from a young age. The poor hygiene and air quality there led him to contract lung infections, permanently deteriorating the quality of his lungs over time. Fyodor's ability. The specifics of Fyodor's ability is one of BSD's greatest mysteries. We know from Dead Apple that the ability is called Crime and Punishment, and was also the only ability that did not try to fight its user. With it, he's able to kill people in an instant without even needing direct contact with them. There are many theories as to what exactly his ability is, but generally the consensus is that it measures the weight of sins committed by people and punishes them accordingly. Although an interpretation I really like is that the ability doesn't punish them for their crimes, but rather according to how the person views they should be punished. A killer who believes murder is wrong, like Oda, would be killed by Fyodor's ability, but someone who believes what they are doing is truly just, such as Fyodor himself, would face no punishment. Nobuko Sasaki. That name doesn't sound familiar. She was a character who appeared in season 1 during the Azio King incident. What's of note here is her name. Sasaki is the name of Kunikida's first wife, who divorced him after only 5 months of marriage. Ironically, Dazai tries to set Kunikida up with her in the show. Another character featured in this arc, Rokuzo, is named after a character from Kunikita's story, Spring Birds. Kunikita's backstory. Apparently I have a lot to say about this guy. Despite being a prominent character with lots of character development and whole episodes dedicated to him, we don't know anything about his past. Well, aside from the fact that he was a math teacher and a college dropout. There are a couple theories about it, but the one I believe the most is his connection to the real Kunikita's story and Honest Man. Basically, the main character's mother died when he was very young, and he grew up with an emotionally distant father. Once his father dies, he is adopted by a relative and becomes a teacher. Like BSD's Kunikita, the story focuses on the character's struggle with ideals and his true nature, which is reflective of his father's. Considering the similar plot points, it's not a stretch to say his family situation would also line up with the novel. Tier 5. Dazai's Paintings In BSD, there's this scene where Dazai is sitting in front of a painting in an art gallery. He comments that it's strange and that it's so bad he'd be able to recreate it himself. Which, obviously he could, because he was the one who made it. This is a painting done by the real Dazai, titled Landscape. Hirotsu makes a comment about a self-portrait Dazai did on the wall of the Port Mafia executive office, saying Elise mistook it for a curse. This is again another painting done by the real Dazai. This one is titled Self-Portrait. Canon Queerness Surprisingly, I'm not talking about Sokoku again. Rather, a few of the real authors referenced in BSD were actually queer in some way. Rampo was the most notable. His works include depictions of gay characters, and he did a lot of research into homosexuality throughout his life. 
Even finishing off his friend Iwata's publication, The History of Homosexuality, for him after he died. While he did marry a woman, Rampo's own descriptions of his experience with sexuality point to him being gay. Yosano was also queer, being in something of a polyamorous relationship with her husband and a woman named Tomiko. Yosano and Tomiko would also write together, publishing a poetry collection called Lover's Clothes. Much of her poetry was rooted in themes of feminism and the lesbian experience. While again, she did marry a man, it's quite clear that she was into women as well. There is also Rando and his assassin partner, who is confirmed to be Paul Verlaine in Novel 8. These two were very gay in real life. It's not an assumption like Rampo and Yosano, it's very much a fact. They were in a horribly toxic relationship with each other, which included stabbing, shootings, and two years in jail. The whole thing is insane. There's others, like Darzai possibly being bi, but they're not as well documented and I don't want it to seem like I'm forcing it. So I'll just end it here. Considering Asagiri's attention to detail, I'd say that this likely transfers over to the characters too. It would be a disservice to the real people for it not to. Natsume Soseki Natsume is one of the most powerful characters in BSD and also makes the least amount of appearances. Everything about him and his motives are deeply shrouded in mystery. His ability seems straightforward, turning into a cat. It is regarded as being the strongest ability user in BSD, so there could be a lot more to it than that. I mean, it looks like it's capable of destroying buildings somehow. He's the reason the detective agency exists and Mori runs the mafia, or to maintain balance in Yokohama. But why? It's like he knows about something big that's going to happen, which will have Yokohama at the center. It's not the whole season 4 and 5 thing, as he didn't get involved. So it has to be worse than the destruction of the whole world. Could it possibly be something to do with what we saw at the end of season 5? During the Dark Era, we can see Dazai talk to Natsumi in cat form, even calling him Sensei, showing that he knows who he is. The hilarious theory as to why that is, is that Dazai tried to pat the cat and ended up undoing the transformation with his nullification ability. I doubt this, as this scene was only included in the anime and not the novel, but I love it at the same time. Lovecraft's ability. Or I guess it's better to say lack of ability. Arguably one of the freakiest characters in BSD, Lovecraft was a member of the guild. Just like his real-life counterpart stories, Lovecraft is able to turn into a giant grotesque monster. I wouldn't have a problem with it if it was an ability, but it's not. Dazai isn't able to nullify it. Therefore, this guy's just genuinely a giant fuck-off monster. So how exactly is that possible? Artificial humans are very much a thing in BSD. I wouldn't be surprised if he was some kind of experimental mistake. But at the end of the guild arc, Lovecraft says his contract has been fulfilled and jumps into the water, which leads me to believe that Fitzgerald made a deal with a demon, and that's just canon. Eye theory. Eyes are an important part of storytelling in BSD. In the afterword of Volume 5, the artist, Harukawa, talks about her use of eyes throughout the manga to represent a character's psychological state. The crazier a character is, the larger pupils and less highlights they have in their eyes, like most of the Port Mafia members. Characters who are still capable of redemption eyes are brighter and are able to change as the story progresses. This is most notably shown with Kyoka. She ends up by saying there's a character whose eyes cloud over whenever they show their true self, but doesn't tell us exactly who it is. It could apply to a few people, but I think it's most correct to say she's talking about Junichiro. His eyes are normally very bright, but when he snaps, he snaps hard, which his eyes reflect by becoming completely blacked out. If this really is about him, it's interesting that she calls it his true nature. I'll talk about this a little more later. Tier 6. Color Theory Character design plays an important part of storytelling in BSD, with the anime putting a focus on colors especially. To go over everything is a lot, but here are some examples. The colors of people's abilities showcase both their character's personality and the relationships between characters. Dazai's ability shows as white and blue, showing its purity and calm nature while also being associated with sadness. Characters that have a mentor and mentee-like relationship will share the same ability color, such as Tanizaki and Kunikita's both being green, Aktagawa and Chuyu's both being red, or all of the guilds being gold. Beige is a colour with a lot of meaning in BSD. It's symbolic of someone who is considered to be a good person and is just in their ideals. Kunikita's outfit is nearly wholly beige, showing his desire to live by his ideals. Oda is also shown in beige, though only his coat, showing how while he has done wrong in the past, he has developed new ideals and intends to live as a good person. The same thing can be said about Dazai. Important events always occur under warm, sunset lighting or literally at sunset. This is symbolic of one thing coming to a close before something new starts up. Samurai Influence Despite it being the end of Japan's samurai era in the mid-1800s, some of the authors featured in BSD were actually trained samurai in real life, which carried over into their characters. If you don't know who, now's your chance to guess. The two I'm talking about are Fukuzawa and Techo. 
Fukuzawa is an influential figure in Japanese history, so his time both training and briefly working as a samurai is fairly well documented. He grew up in a samurai family and worked as one for the early stages of his life. While it's pretty hard to find information on the real-life counterparts of the hunting dogs, there is a bit of information on Techo. He was also born into a family of samurai and attended a samurai-style school in southern Japan. In BSD, both these characters use a sword as their main weapon, with Techo's ability also being related to his swordsmanship. Rather than this being a random choice, it's actually a nod to their upbringing, which is another one of the many references Asagiri was able to include in his series. Sigmund Freud Sigmund Freud was a doctor who was mainly known for his now controversial research into psychoanalysis. Many modern therapy techniques developed from his research. Why is this relevant? It's believed that he is the basis for BSD's Sigma. Aside from the similar sounding names, they both have quite a bit in common. Both are highly dedicated to their work and Sigma's thoughts on his own creation, destiny and self reflect a lot of Freud's work. Sigma's ability of being able to transfer information between people is also similar to one of Freud's research topics, transference, which is to project feelings from one's childhood onto someone else. Freud also did a lot of research into childhood and how different occurrences can affect the way someone develops mentally. Sigma is somewhat of a child himself, being born from a page three years ago. His development is reflected from his movement between the Decay of Angels and the Detective Agency. Also, Freud was inspired a lot by Fedor's works when conducting his own research. Higuchi's ability. Have you ever thought that Higuchi was a weird member of the Port Mafia, being someone without an ability fighting against all these ability users? Well, she actually does have an ability. It just hasn't made an appearance in the series yet because Asagiri hasn't decided what it is. Though, it has to be named after one of the author's actual books, so we can take a stab at what it might be. Take Kurobe, or Growing Up slash Child's Play in English. Nigore, or Troubled Waters and Muddy Bay, and The Thirteenth Night are the most well-known, but she has written many short stories. I'd place my bet on Child's Play and it being something to do with guns, but if it were that simple, it probably would have been shown already, so maybe not. Tier 7. These are all theories, by the way. Fukuzawa's ability. Something that's basically never discussed is Fukuzawa's ability and its possible implications. The ability all men are created equal allows Fukuzawa to limit the abilities of his subordinates. It's confirmed that the ability is currently being used on Atsushi and Kyoka to help them control their power. Are there any other agency members who are also having their abilities suppressed? The only others that would make any sense are Kenji and Tanizaki. I do think Kenji's is, as we know he's capable of destroying a mountain, but we have not seen that strength from him in the series yet. The possibility of Tanizaki's also being suppressed is the basis for a lot of really dark things. I'm going to cover this in the next point, so I'll leave that one there. Then what if Fukuzawa is using his ability on more than just the agency members we know? What about super powerful criminals or something? All they would have to do is legally become a member of the agency and Fukuzawa would theoretically be able to completely limit their abilities. So then, what if Fukuzawa died? All of the abilities he's controlling would now be fully released, leading to a possible mass destruction if he's suppressing more than just Atsushi's and Kyoka's abilities. Naomi is dead. I have my own theory on why the Tanizaki's relationship is so weird, but this is another version of that theory. Basically, Naomi is not real, or she is someone who has died and the Naomi we see in the series is an illusion created by Junichiro's ability. Junichiro's illusions are extremely realistic, I don't doubt he is capable of doing this. Tying back in with the eye theory, Junichiro's eyes change a lot when Naomi is being attacked, revealing his true, scarily protective nature. This would make a lot of sense if Naomi is dead. Naomi's death would have taken a large mental toll on Junichiro. I'd even go as far as saying he doesn't realise that the Naomi is with now is an illusion. He has that extreme desire to protect her because he subconsciously refuses to let her die again. Assuming this is true, I have my own theory of how he became a member of the detective agency. I believe that Fukuzawa could have found him trapped inside one of his own illusions. If his family, or at least Naomi, were to die, I could see Junichiro using his ability to recreate his normal life before such a thing occurred. Eventually, people would realise, hey, these people are meant to be dead, what the fuck? Leading to Fukuzawa becoming aware of him. Going back to the previous point, Fukuzawa could be limiting Tanizaki's ability so he doesn't fall into his own illusions again. But letting him keep the fake Naomi is a way of, I don't know, keeping him mentally stable for the most part. Dazai is immortal. Despite all his attempts and also just insanely dangerous lifestyle, Dazai is still alive. Well, what if that's just because he can't die? Rather than no longer human, just being able to nullify other people's abilities, what if it also nullifies anything harmful? This theory fits more with the name of the ability, no longer human. What's more human than death? That's depressing, but would you consider a person who can't die really human? 
The bandages could also play into this, being a way of hiding that he doesn't have any scars despite all his injuries. He tells Oda he wears the bandage over his eye to hide a scar from an attempt via hitting his head on tofu, but it's revealed that nothing's there. Do I think this is actually true? No, but it's something interesting to think about. Kunikita's death wish. Jaze is known for being the most, uh, committed member of the detective agency, but what if I told you that's not true? You see, Dazo only puts himself in harm's way in front of other people. Rather than attempts, they seem like dramatic or maybe just silly entrances. There's always someone there to save him. Kunikita, on the other hand, he will throw himself into a deadly situation with absolutely no guarantee that someone will save him at the drop of a hat. In the OVA, he held onto a bomb, which did explode and nearly killed him, all because Yosano usually goes shopping there and might be able to save him. There are about a million ways it could have gone wrong and both he and the girl would have died. In season 4, he jumps out of a helicopter with a grenade and no plan whatsoever. And in season 3, he jumps towards an explosion he only managed to survive due to an act of God? I don't know how he survived that one. He really should be dead. While not being known for his commitment like the real Dazai, the real Kunikita did suffer from depression, from both the effects of the war and separation from his first wife. He also died very young, at 36, due to a disease. As much as I don't want it to be true, this guy has a lot of death flags, and his reckless attitude is not helping him. Well that was fun. I feel like I did a bad job at deciding the order of the iceberg, so sorry about that one. It was a long one, so of course, thank you for your time.